good morning, everyone. Hello, and hello again to those of you who joined our first session a moment ago. But greetings to the class of 2024 and 2025, our students, parents, family members, and friends. My name is Brendan Kyle, and I'm the Executive Director of Alumni and Family Engagement. Uh, welcome to our second session of the day, and thank you so much for joining us for our first ever virtual family orientation as we lead into Move-In Weekend here on campus. Uh, again, before we get started, I would just like to point your attention to a few helpful resources and information. First and foremost, as I mentioned a second ago, this session is one of nearly 10 live sessions that will be spanning across the entire week uh, between today, the 16th through the 19th. Uh, our topics will range from, of course, athletics to academic support, student wellness, engagement, and even a few updates and guidelines on COVID-19 protocols and how the college has been preparing for our community's return to campus. Each session will be interactive and questions are always welcome. Um, all sessions will be recorded and available uh, on, at Pitzer at Home, which you can find uh, on the main webpage. You can find our full schedule of Pitts, uh, on our Pitzer Families webpage, which you can also locate from the main Pitzer College homepage at the upper right hand corner of the screen. We will share a few of those links in the chat box below, uh, just as helpful uh, uh, resources for you. So today we'll be hearing from our lead athletics director for Pomona Pitzer Sage Hand Athletics, uh, who is joined today by our student athlete and member of the class of 2022, Riley Knowles. Um, Mary uh, Merrill officially joined us in the spring of 2020, if you can believe it. I think at that point, we could all use a bit of good news. And when the announcement arrived her, about her appointment, it felt like the official start of an exciting chapter. Uh, Miriam will be sharing a quick overview of her program, some of the exciting things her and her team are working on, um, and what some, student, some of our student athletes can look forward to this year. So without further ado, uh, Miriam, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Brandon. It's great to be with everyone, though I can't see you. Eventually, I will be able to. So what I'm going to do first is just take us through a quick presentation, and then certainly we'll have some time to just chat and answer any questions that you may have. So feel free to start throwing them in the chat or in the Q&A um, if you like. Um, so again, I'm Miriam Merrill, Chair of Physical Education and Director of Pomona Pitcher Athletics, and I am so excited to have my uh, esteemed colleague here, uh, Riley, who's going to assist with uh, questions moving forward. So, all right, so let's talk through what we have that's super exciting. So as you all may know, um, and for those of you who don't know, we are actually in the process of building a brand new athletic wellness uh, and recreation building. And we are so excited. So I'll talk through a few things that you can see here. Um, you know, one of the things in our, our last space was that students just didn't have the space to kind of rec um, have recreation and to do types of fitness activities. So whether it was, um, you know, a bike or treadmills, right? We were really kind of crunched with space. But as you'll see here um, in this area, kind of leading behind this wall here um, is a fitness area. I'll show a picture that will kind of lead into that. We also have two gyms. So here you'll see vocal gym, which is where our competition space will be for varsity athletics. Um, and then we have this second gym, which is, uh, will be a practice gym and also be a space for uh, recreation club intramurals as well. And, and club intramurals will also have access to a vocal gym, but it certainly now is gonna be a much bigger space. So here you'll see kind of all of the uh, space for fitness, which again, we're super excited about because that's where kind of the crunch we were feeling. Um, so the students, faculty, staff will be able to come over, uh, work out, engage in fitness activities. We'll have studios, we'll have classrooms where we can really engage in topics um, that relate to fitness and wellness in ways that we haven't been able to before. So here's just an inside picture of the practice gym on the second floor. So as you see, you can have a view of the mountains, which is a really great view uh, and space for us to really just um, have recreation. So a lot of folks have been wondering, well, what are we doing during temporary plans, right? Because we don't have the building. Um, so our athletic offices are now located in the former art museum on Pomona's campus. Um, I recommend you come down and see us. We have flipped it and turned into uh, an office space, which is really kind of fun and lively. Um, there's a temporary space at our steel track. So down near the track, there's a small space that has um, cardio equipment, treadmills, uh, and some dumbbells. We also are gonna offer some outdoor fitness classes for students. Um, and then we have uh, Robert's Pavilion, provided that, you know, LA County doesn't have any new um, 
uh, guidelines that we have to follow, we're hoping to still have access to Roberts Pavilion, which is on CMS's campus. And then as you all know, the Gold Student Center is of access, which is what is exciting for us as well. So this is kind of a picture of the temporary facility that we have down near the track. So as you can see, we have some cardio equipment uh, and weights. And so next I'll kind of move in and talk about athletics. So I imagine that we have quite a few families here that have student athletes. So I wanna talk a little bit more about that. Um, so last year we did some, uh, we had a consultant, outside consultant company come in and help us kind of create um, our core values. And so we've talked to students, student athletes, department members, faculty, staff, and students, both on Pomona and Pittsburgh's campus. And this is what we've come up with. And these are the values that ground us in the work that we do to support our student athletes. So the first one is holistic development. And that really means that regardless of the things that our students are doing on their field, in the pool, in the courts, um, and the courses, all of their spaces, we wanna make sure that we are developing our students both mentally, socially, and physically. And so it's more about competition, but it's about student athletes as a whole. So that whenever they leave us, they are feeling like as a whole person that they had a really great experience. The next thing I'll talk about is community, right? So it's really important for us to make sure that we are contributing to contributing to and working towards a very inclusive and welcoming environment so that our student athletes and anyone who's in our spaces, regardless of the identity, feels as if they are welcome. It also means that we will hold each other accountable as a community and that it is larger than just us as individual sage hens, but us as a community and as a collective. Particularly because we are coming back with new expectations around right COVID health and safety, uh, it is really vastly important for us to be committed to the sense of community. And then lastly, excellence. So I am super competitive, right? And so it is important for me to make sure that I am creating and presenting the resources that coaches have so that student athletes and them uh, and others can be successful and be excellent. So it is important that they're excellent in their athletic spaces, but it is just as important that they are uh, um, excellent in their academic spaces. And we have absolutely seen that uh, with our student athletes oftentimes being having the highest GPA within our conference and within division three. Um, so we are super excited that these are the core values that will drive um, us from here moving forward. So you'll see this in almost every aspect that we do. So I'll talk a little bit about programming. So um, one of the things that we are investing in uh, that we have done in the past, but we were digging in just a little bit deeper um, are topics like Title IX, bystander training, community building, sexual violence prevention, healthy masculinity and ally training. So as we talk about kind of this holistic development in the sense of community, it is really important that we are well-versed in all of these things so that we are um, operating and uh, showcasing uh, cultures, behaviors that are acceptable, welcoming, and supportive of one another. So that's a little bit about our programming. So let's talk about competition. I know there's a lot of questions about spectators. What are we doing on the day of? All of those things. So just a quick Skyac update. We are going to have Skyac competitions. Um, we will ha also have outside of conference competitions as well, provided that nothing changes. Um, but we are really looking forward to being able to get back to the things that we love doing um, this year. So our spectator policy as it uh, relates to right now, now in another day or so, could that change? Absolutely. But we are looking forward to welcoming um, our families and stage hand supporters back. So um, as it relates to spectators, for those who are attending indoor events, we will have social distancing and our guests will be um, expected to wear masks regardless of vaccination status. So all of us will need to wear masks. And then outdoors, um, those who are vaccinated do not have to wear masks. With those who are not vaccinated, we are asking for the honor policy for those to wear masks who are not vaccinated. We will also be practicing social distancing um, outside as well to make sure that our, our spectators um, come, feel safe, and can leave us uh, ha happy and uh, healthy individuals. Again, all of this is uh, predict predicated on um, you know, the NCA guidelines, shifting LA guidelines, state guidelines. So that's where we're at right now, but we will certainly make sure that we update communication to our student athletes, coaches, teams, and website um, as that changes. So one of the last things I wanna talk about is expe expectations. So what you can expect of me um, as families, what you can expect from me. And the two things that I like to talk about are um, the two C's. So the first is change and the second is communication. So when I talk about change, it's the change in relationship that you will now have with your student athlete. 
I remember years and years and years ago <laughs> when my mother dropped me off at college um, as a student athlete, she said, you know, Miriam, one of the things that will change is we can now be friends. And I was like, I thought we were always friends. And she was like, well, yeah, we were. She was like, but now I no longer tell you what to do. When you come to me with problems, I will give you advice. I will give you suggestions, but they are your problems to work through, right? So I shift now from being this caregiver that takes care of things for you to now being the support system that helps you take care of the things on your own. So that's what I mean when I talk about change. And so that certainly um, uh, grounds the way in which I support our student athletes. So as it relates to communication, I have an open door policy for our student athletes. They can come see me. Parents, you can come chat with me, tell me how things are going on your end. And reintroduce yourself if, I've, if you've introduced me before and maybe I forget. There are many of you and only one of me, so feel free to, to introduce yourself. But one thing I do wanna set expectations around is the things that um, is hard for me to have conversations around. And one is playing time. So I am not at practice every day. Us who are not at practice every day, we really can't attest to how practice is going and how our student athletes are performing. So while I won't have conversations about um, playing time, what I will do is have conversations with student athletes to have those conversations with coaches, captains, whomever it is to, to, to talk about playing time, right? So I ask that parents and families don't call me asking about playing time because that's something that I, I will not dictate. I also ask that parents don't email me with anonymous conversations um, it is really hard for me, especially when parents have concerns, for parents to come to me and say, I need to keep this anonymous. That's that uh, is unfortunate, but I can't do that, right? Because I am really invested. And if there is uh, challenges happening or things that need to be addressed, um, I can't do them without talking to right our student athletes who are, are involved. And also know that if you do have any concerns, I will also loop in your student athlete because I will have to talk to them eventually. So I think the best thing, uh, the way that I've seen uh, student athletes be supported in the past is for parents, caregivers, and family members to just say, hey, what do you need from me? How can I support you? Go talk to whoever it is. Here are some things that you might want to say whenever you do that, uh, but allowing them to, to begin to have these hard conversations because ultimately they are with us for four years. And what we want to make sure is that when they leave us, they are equipped to have the conversations as adults in their um, working spaces, in their personal lives and all of that. So we are in the business of human development um, and that's really what um, I drive home here in my role as the director of athletics. So the last thing I wanna talk about is our Sage Hands app. This is super exciting. It will be released in the next couple of weeks and it will allow you to stay connected to us so you can watch games as they happen. Um, there's fan guys, stats, all of these things. The super exciting thing that I want to talk about pinpoint is our Sage Hand Rewards. So what happens is when, when you're on campus and you go to an event, you check in and you get points. So you might get 10 points, you might get 15 points if it's a big game. Um, and then what happens is those points add up. And then every couple of games we'll have what's called uh, a reward or a, a, a rewards par a party, I guess, or a reward story. There it is. Um, and so you can trade in your points for things like water bottles, sweatshirts, t-shirts, socks, like all of those fun things. So it's a really way, a fun way for our fans to engage with us while they're here. So make sure that you do download the app in the upcoming weeks, we'll make sure that there's information out about it. So that's pretty much all that I have. I wanna roll into some questions and answers because I know there are quite a few out there. So I will stop sharing. And Brandon, do you wanna maybe facilitate? The yeah, absolutely. So again, just, uh, please feel free to share your questions either in the chat box or in the Q&A portal, but um, we have some questions that we can kick off with. Uh, well, first and foremost, as soon as it's available, just as a, a note, we'll be linking the Go Sage Hen app to our Pitzer Families web page. Really excited about this uh, sort of new venture with our athletics program to be able to like share all of that information in one place uh, will be really, really nice. Um, so let's see, Miriam, how do you prioritize academics as a part of sort of the student athlete co-curriculum process? That's a great question. I'm actually going to throw that one to Riley and then I'll take it from there. Yes, uh, great question. So obviously choosing to play division three sports. Um, one reason I really did it was to be able to have that balance between sports and academics. And I found the biggest way I've been able to do that is just the support system within the teammates um, on my team. So I play lacrosse, but I'm sure this can be said for every team on campus. I've just found that 
you know, having upperclassmen to be able to point you towards academic resources, there's a lot going on your freshman year. So if you don't grab them right away, there are people that have been there and can help you out. Um, and then just generally having people after practice to go to the library with right away or, you know, study with you on campus. I think that's been the biggest way that personally I've been able to balance both of those things, but from like an administrative or a school standpoint, um, there are like so many resources that you can access um, that the athletics department will tell you and then also your individual campus um, pits are obviously if we're doing this pizza zoom um they'll let you know where you can access all of those as well and i'll just quickly add thanks riley for that um that you know there are a lot of resources i think the key is just to as riley stated ask upper class students ask teammates ask coaches ask administrators right when you get stuck or don't know this is what we are here for right to help guide you through the process so just don't be afraid or hesitant to ask when you have questions and then we just have a quick note. So the Sage Hand, the Go Sage Hand app is, is currently in development, so it'll be coming out soon. Um, so I'm there. Great question. So I, I hear there are different quarantining rules for positive tests between Pomona and Pitzer. Can you can these be aligned? I would imagine, particularly for student athletes. Yeah, so we have actually an NCAA policy that's aligned, right? Um, but one of the things that we know is that we um, support two institutions. And so those individual institutions do have their own uh, policy. So we certainly are making sure that um, student athletes, according to the home institution, are following that particular policy. Um, and I know that it can be confusing, but we have tried to lay it out as quickly as we can, or as easily as we can, or succinctly. Um, to make sure that students, you know, have a sense of where and coaches can guide students uh, through both of those protocols. Perfect. And then another question, I know you I think you have a, a team over this, but can you describe the social media and comms effort? Um, do each team handle this separately or is there sort of one encompassing Sage Hand Athletics uh, communications? Team? Yeah, so there's both. So we have um, a Sage Hand app, a Sage Hand Athletics, so on Instagram, uh, Facebook page, right? So please follow us. Um, and then each team has their individual um, pages. And so I think, you know, there was a, concept or a, a, a comment that it seems very light. Yes, it seems very light because we did not have sports last year, right? <laughs> so what we did is we highlighted all of the kind of academic achievements, but without these like weekly games that are happening, it does seem very light. So I understand why that seems to be so, but gosh, what do we have? Three more weeks left, four, and then we're up and running. So I don't know, Riley, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, the lacrosse uh, page or how that works, and that might be helpful. Yeah. yeah, from what I've seen, each team kind of manages their own social media differently. I think my coach is in charge of mine, and it's fun. They kind of take a life of their own. We at Sage Lax on Instagram, if you're interested in checking it out, um, I think that's fun. And I follow a bunch of other teams and it's been fun this preseason to start to see the content. Miriam, like you said, like it's starting to pop up and you see them doing lifts or different workshops. And so that's a fun way to keep up with everything. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, when, do you know when the new sports facility will be open and ready for students to enjoy? Yes, fall of 22. So. We are still on task and target. So fall of 22 is when we hope to, to be able to open it up to the community. Perfect, I think that's a perfect segue into a um, question perhaps uh, for Riley. What advice would you give to an incoming student athlete? Perhaps can you share a bit about your experience as a first year joining our community for the first time? Yeah, um, oh my gosh. That was such a long time ago, but it was a blast. I just remember I felt kind of overwhelmed um, and there was a lot going on, but just from the moment I stepped on campus, it was so comforting to know that I had nine other girls in my class that I could find right away and that they were upperclassmen and they really made an effort to reach out to us. And I'm a spring sport, so we don't get to meet right in the fall, but there were lots of opportunities to meet as a team and our coach was reaching out. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing was just that like sense of community I felt right away, despite having not met any of them. Um, and then advice that I I would give is just to kind of ask a lot of questions like you were saying one of the like best kept resources are just your upperclassmen and people that are older than you on your team they'll give you the tips that you won't hear other places and yeah I think that resource and ever all the girls on my team were so helpful in 
everything like you know where's the best place to get a fan for your room when it's too hot or like where's the best place to study if I really need to do that late one night so they're the best resource for those types of questions. Perfect. Um, let's see, a question about intramural sports. Uh, what can Pitzer students expect uh, as it relates to those activities? Yeah, so it really just depends on kind of the sport. So, you know, it is really important for us to make sure that we are doing this safely, right? And based on kind of evidence as to what makes sense and what, what we can do safely as it relates to COVID protocols. Um, so what I'll say, generally speaking, is that outdoor kind of intramural sports probably will be able to go. Um, but we've got to really think about the ways that we engage in them safely, right? Because we know that intramural sports is 5C. Um, so it's likely that we'll follow uh, kind of the when the 5Cs decides to do like um, in, in integrated club events. Um, and then I, I imagine that some of our indoor sports probably will be uh, put on hold for a while. So uh, there will be some opportunities, yes, but again, it's really about being safe uh, and making sure that we can engage in this without, you know, having folks being worried about uh, being sick or anything like that, so. Can you comment on any 5C sports such as equestrian? My daughter is a vulture and is interested in this. Sure. So I'll talk about equestrian specifically because it involves travel. So that's kind of the key difference here um, is really just making sure, again, that we are following kind of the institutional's guidelines on 5C travel. Um, and so I think equestrian, certainly we haven't made any final decisions, but we're really trying to think through the travel piece because that means that people have to be in a space together, right? Not socially distanced. Um, so we'll certainly have more information, but at this moment, really trying to think through um, those uh, particular activities. Perfect. And I see a, a question from earlier. Uh, when is the new sports complex expected to be completed? I believe it was fall of 2022. So we seem to be still on track, which is exciting. Um, let's see, Miriam, this question is uh, for you. Being that many of the athletic programs and training facilities take place on Pomona's campus, how do you ensure Pitzer students feel included in the full uh, experience? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Riley, do you want to take that one? And then I can follow uh, up. Yes. So I love this question. Um, one of the big reasons I chose to come to Pitzer was for that 5C Pomona Pitzer kind of experience. And I think the fact that it's at Pomona on a lot of those facility facilities really makes you stretch your campus as a whole. And so I have really enjoyed that. In terms of accessing them and getting to them, my biggest piece of advice is to get a bike. <laughs> I really like to skateboard, so I have a skateboard as well, but I have never felt any sort of like disconnect from being able to access those facilities. And the shed where my team lifts and a lot of team lifts is kind of right in the middle between where a lot of students are coming. And then there's also the GSC for, uh, sorry, for Pitzer students to lift at, which is right here as well. So you don't have to travel far at all. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Thanks. Uh, one thing that I'll add is that, you know, the, the benefit of not having a building is now we need space. And so our coaches now are like, well, let's just go ahead and meet on Pitzer's campus too, right? So um, coaches now are meeting on both campuses. Uh, and you will also see that as well, where uh, a t coach may join, um, you know, teammates up at Pitzer for dinner or things like that. So making sure that it's not always taking place down here at Pomona. I know also um, I have a coach that's very intentional about whenever it's um, they come back, right, from traveling abroad or not abroad, traveling on away games, uh, making sure that they stop at Pitzer, right, not just stopping at Pomona and expecting Pitzer students to walk up. So I think those small kind of um, intentions are really important to make sure that we aren't specifically just at Pomona's campus. And I'll also add that um, as an athletic department, we also have our department meetings up at Pitzer. Awesome. This is a sort of general question. Are the same number of PE classes as usual available? Yes. So we have uh, same number of PE classes that are offered. Um, so, you know, some of the classes we weren't able to offer last semester while we were virtual, we're excited to be able to offer now, like the Tough Mudder and the Triathlon and Playground Games and all of those. So, yep. Perfect. Uh, this question is for both of you. So you spoke a little bit about this earlier when you referenced the two C's change in communication. 
Uh, what advice would you give to parents of student athletes about ushering the, their students um, into this new chapter, this next chapter of, of their experience as both first years and now because of what's been going on as sophomores as well? Yeah, I would say just making sure that, um, you know, you tell your students, hey, this, this is my advice. This is what I would say is go talk to X, Y, and Z um, and, and hope that they do. But one of the things that we know, right, as young adults, we can no longer physically make them do anything. So it's really just knowing that all of our families have done a phenomenal job of supporting, developing, and growing our, our young people so that whenever they arrive to campus, they may not know everything, but we certainly are here to be a support network to catch them when they fall. So just making sure you just reiterate, go see so-and-so, oh, ask so-and-so, right? Whether it's um, you know student affairs folks, upper class students, for the faculty, right? At, we are all here to make sure they survive. So find someone um, and that's kind of the, the best way to do it is just to push them to go talk to someone. Perfect. And then we have a question in the Q&A portal. Can Pitzer students use the McKenna pool? <laughs> the McKenna pool. All McKenna, right. So, McKenna pool. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, this is being here a year and <laughs> haven't fully grasped my, I believe uh, maybe the question is um, Haldeman, is that what the, because so Haldeman and Pendleton are the two pools down at Pomona's campus. I think that's what the question is about. Um, th that answer is yes, yes. So students, faculty and staff have access to all of um, facilities down on Pomona's campus. Okay, um, and then this question is I think about Fees. So my understanding was that the key athletic programs were funded at Pomona Pitzer from e from lacrosse, softball, et cetera, uh, while discussing with our freshmen and university that there were fees included to pay. So essentially, what do the fees cover and what shall we expect from uh, contributions in the future? Uh, you know, that's a great question. And I think that may be best answered by um, folks in our either admissions department or financial aid. Um, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest, what fees you are referring to. Uh, Brandon, I'm not sure if you have a sense, or Riley, if you kind of have seen your bill and know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I was under the impression, I think the, the, at the beginning part of their statement that um, they were funded. So I'm not sure which fees exactly, if you can maybe be specific or um, feel free to email us uh, even after we can kind of address it. I was informed that the fees for lacrosse were 1400 for was that a club maybe club that sounds like that may be a club yeah so uh, okay so I'll talk a little bit about clubs um so there are different clubs right lacrosse basketball all those um and they actually play um in the area right and then they also have um championship events that they can qualify for and so that often includes you know travel food like all of those types of things we certainly contribute to some of that um but there is, there are some clubs that require additional, right? That's nothing that the athletics department has said, hey, as a club, you need to require additional. It's just as a club, they've gotten together and wanted to do above and beyond what we're able to assist with. And so they are, are charging additional fees. I, I think that's what this question is about. Okay. Uh, Riley, this question is directed toward you. So what, how have your, has your, you and your teammates been able to stay connected uh, while apart during the last uh, year and a half? Yeah, great question. It has definitely been difficult not being able to see them every single day. Um, I just moved back into campus three days ago and now two of my teammates are in this suite with me and it's like an incredible feeling to be back with them. But um, we had a lot of Zooms in the fall. We did different team activities and on my team, we have, they're called little hen families. So it would be like an upperclassman and a few underclassmen. Um, and so we did Zooms with them and we had group chats and we have a whole team group chat right now to try and get us all connected um, before we all arrive. So we can plan different events to get to know each other. Sorry, get to know everybody because half of our team we've never met before. Um, but yeah, it definitely has been a little weird and challenging as it has been to stay in touch with everyone. I think that my team has done the best that we can and we're just so excited to get them all in one place very soon. Okay, um, I'll see. Marion, this question might be for you. So what have uh, you and your team uh, under the St. Chad Athletics umbrella perhaps learned over the past year and a half 
that you found to be invaluable as you're planning for the year ahead? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I think one of the things is just don't take um, the experience for granted, right? Like we all just assumed we would always be playing, coaching, supporting, right? Student athletes in their particular sports. Um, so to not take that for granted. And I think that, you know, as our student, our fall student athletes have returned, and that is one thing that I have sensed from them is that they no longer are going to take this for granted, right? So as we talk about, ah, now we have to shift and we've got to, you know, wear masks and do this and that or and test more. And students are just like, okay, right? Like, this is what we have to do in order to be back and we would rather be back. So I think that's one thing. So being flexible is also another. One thing I'll talk about as it relates to physical education is what we learned is um, we did, offered some classes asynchronously and our ultimate goal is to have students moving their bodies, right? In any shape and form, whether it's taking a class, whether it's taking spin class or something like that. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that they are moving their bodies. And what we found is that there's a small population of students who um, really benefited from asynchronous and doing kind of workouts on their own, reporting journals. And so if that is a way that we can engage students, right, and we won't offer all, class. it'll probably be a small class, you know, full of maybe four or five, and we'll cap it at four or five students, but being able to um, meet students where they're at, because some students were like, I don't like to go in and work out in front of a bunch of people or to check in, right? And so if there's a way for us to offer that so that students can engage in moving their bodies, that's something we're um, absolutely thinking about moving forward. I see a question here. What are some of the best ways for students interested in joining sports to get in contact with their coaches or teams? Yeah, so if you are interested in joining a team, then you can go to sagehens.com and email the coach to let them know. Um, what I would also say is um, if club and intramurals is something you're interested in, right? Because if varsity athletics isn't it, um, there are other opportunities to stay engaged. Um, there is what's called the turf dinner that happens in September. Um, where we will set up a table and uh, talk about all the sports and intramural and clubs uh, programs that we offer. And that's a great way to get involved uh, as well. Perfect. And I just linked the Sage and Athletics website Perfect. into the chat. Um, question for Riley How do you juggle your coursework and practice and games? Do you feel supported in that balance from staff, faculty, and your teammates? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Often I hear like the same consensus among a lot of student athletes and that's I perform better in the classroom or I just like manage my time better when I'm in season um, because between practice schedules and then I have a job here on campus as well, there's less time to do that work. And so you have to be really productive in that time. So I found that has been a really helpful structure in my life to stay on top of things. Um, and then in the fall as well, we do lift. Um, and we have captain's practices and I'm also just trying to stay on top of my own fitness. So it's just being able to juggle your time. It's funny, I have this great planner right here. I would recommend a planner to every student athlete to be able to say, or any student in general, write down, figure out what blocks of time you have to focus on either yourself or different work or when you have classes, when you have practice and then being able to like actually write your action items for what you're trying to get done. That's been how I've done it. And how I feel supported is, I think I mentioned this earlier, like no one, if I tell a teammate, hey, I need to go to the library tonight, I can't go by myself because I won't get anything done. They're like, done, I'm there. And they'll, they'll sit with you the whole time. Um, your coaches are really understanding if you have a lab or something that means you'll be at practice late, you'll never not miss a lab. Like you will go to lab and then you'll go to your practice. Um, if you've got a lot of finals going on, anything like that, they're just very understanding and they understand that you're a student first and then you're an athlete. And I think that just is a consensus amongst everybody, all the athletes here. It's like, I'm here to do school and work really hard in school. And I'm here to work really hard on the field and I can do both of them. I need, I need some tips on how to prioritize from you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get a passion planner. This is my favorite one. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Um, look, at Miriam, in your first, so you obviously you entered into our community um, in 2020, in your first sort of 90 days, 60 days, or even a year, what would you say became some of your biggest priorities? Perhaps you can elaborate on the mission to core values uh, exercise that you've been doing with your administrators and coaches. 
Sure. So, you know, they always say, oh, first 90 days, this is what you're going to do. Yeah, no, that went out the window. Because <laughs> um, on my first day, or no, actually it was my third day, right? I had to tell my department that the students weren't coming back this semester and we weren't playing. So, you know, hi, I'm Miriam. Uh, we're not coming back this semester. Um, but yeah, so that was definitely tough. But I think one of the things that I really appreciate and that we kind of dug our heels into is all of this other thing, all these other things that we talk about that are really important, right? So this holistic development. So even though we couldn't coach students in their respective athletic spaces, um, so we had a leadership academy that formed, we had a um, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that formed, and we also had a mental health, wellness, and performance committee that um, formed, and we really started to create uh, programming for students to kind of engage in all of these outside topics that we really don't have a whole lot of time to do whenever they're here, right? So we could really dig in in a way that I think um, was really exciting. And so that also springboarded us for this upcoming year, right? So all of those topics that I've talked about, you know, our students have engaged in them in this past year and understand how and why those are important topics for us to engage in, even though their schedules are so very packed and tight. Um, but what's important is if we say that we are committed to these things, then we've got to be committed to them, right? We need to be more than just performative and say that they're important, but we need to commit uh, time to them. And I, I'm really grateful for, so far, our fall student athletes who have leaned into the topics and really engaged in them in a, in a very fruitful way. Um, so yeah, I think that's something that we're, we're super excited and continue to do. And the three kind of uh, uh, core values that, that I mentioned before, you will hear me talk about them all the time. They're in my um, tagline. We will eat, sleep, and breathe those three things. Um, so student athletes, our department members know exactly what we stand for. When students come on campus, when visitors come on campus, uh, this is this is what we're doing here. So, perfect. Now let's see another question. Uh, with the rise in COVID nineteen cases and just the uncertainty that is always looming due to the pandemic, how will students and parents be kept in the loop as things possibly change for the fall and the spring? Uh, do you have a committee working um, on that? Uh, within group? Yeah, so what I'll say is there are probably, gosh, two or three committees on each institution um, that are working towards this and have literally been doing this since last February. Well, yeah, probably last February, right? And so I think, and the, the interesting thing is because the information shifts so much and so quickly, like, Committees get together and we think that we're ahead and this is where we're going. And then LA County says something else. And then we've got to shift and change. And then what does that mean for this group, right? And so I think uh, oftentimes it feels as if the information is not being shared and that nothing is happening, but I can absolutely assure you, my colleagues are living, sleeping, eating and breathing this day and night um, to make sure that we are getting it right. And that's the key, right? Is that we want to make sure that we get it right. Now, might there be something that we don't get right? Probably. This is the first time we're all doing this through a pandemic. So we'll mess some things up. But one of the things that we ask, and I've asked of our student athletes, of our coaches, uh, and that we ask of our families and, and, and parents is to just be patient, right? So if something doesn't seem right, or um, you've got a differing opinion that, you know, you feel like it's probably better, certainly share that. We are open to ideas, uh, but just know that we are using um, evidence to make decisions uh, and having conversations that impact all different departments to make sure that we are keeping our community and students safe. Um, I think this question could perhaps be uh, directed to both of you. Um, so we know that students and student athletes are bal bal balancing, excuse me, a lot right now. How do you support student wellness and mental health throughout the year? You want to go first or you want me to go first? Uh, you can go. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we have um, drop-in hours for our student athletes that, so they can meet with um, their respective deans and also um, uh, Stephanie, who is in uh, the student affairs department. So there are drop-in hours where students can just come in and talk about whatever it is. Um, we also have access to, to 5C Health, right? So that plan is also a way for students to kind of engage in those uh, conversations. One thing that I'll also say is we continue to educate our coaches on how to be supportive around that. And um, I have yet to find a coach who has said, you know, if a student athlete says, today I, I can't do it, that a coach is like, suck it up, right? We realize that that is no longer the way in which we operate and that's not my expectations. Um, having a PhD in sports psychology 
has really helped shape me and my expectations for my department. And so mental wellness is absolutely at the forefront of that. So I think that we can, you know, what, what we really need students to know is that again, we're here to support. So when things get heavy, tough, if it's not a coach, it's a student athlete or another student or a faculty member that can help guide them through this process because no one should absolutely do this alone at all. Um, yeah, um, I'm a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee for Pomona Pitzer, PP, PP Stack on Instagram. And um, one that's a great way to get involved with the Pomona Pitzer athletics community as a student, because you get to meet a lot of different students from different sports, all working towards goals such as this. Um, there's a whole committee dedicated to mental health and wellness, and they were really, we were really active um, in the fall. I took the spring semester off. I did a Knowles trip, if you're familiar with it. So I don't really know what was going on because I was in the woods, but in the fall, we met weekly on Zoom and we had a lot of conversations about ways that we could engage the student athlete um, community and making sure that everyone was staying well, um, providing different resources and outreach, especially during this time because it's been really difficult having, you know, that outlet of sport being taken away from you. Um, so that's one way I feel supported and I know that there are other student athletes working to help the broader community to feel supported as well. And then within your own team, it's definitely a conversation every team is having. And I think it's framed differently now because of COVID and we've all been through a lot in the past 16 months. Um, but yeah, from the moment I met with my team, I realized it was something that they all really valued, that my coach really valued. And it's a conversation that we just keep on having. Thank you so much. So I, I think this will be our last question. So in addition to games, are there events, tailgates, programs that parents can possibly look forward to this fall or spring? Yeah, so as it relates to tailgates, you know, again, it's about making sure that we are safe and doing it well. So we'll probably roll out some information on that coming up, but absolutely, right? We'd love to have parents, families around engaging, um, saying hello, cheering us on, being, you know, good and loud supporters in the stands. Um, so we absolutely will, will welcome that. I think there's also you know, opportunities if there are ways in which that you wanna get involved. Some teams have um, parent groups that support the team. So that's always a way, um, but yeah, by all means, if you've got some ideas and thoughts, um, you know, throw it out and, and we'll see where we can take it. I would add, um, I'm from Philadelphia. So my parents come out to maybe one game a year. But in the meantime, they have a little Pomona Pitzer pennant that they pin under their TV and they watch the live streams. So if you're not in Claremont, if you're far from California, do that and um, send your student a picture of the screen because it makes my day every time. My pop-up does it too. He loves, he loves across. Love it. That's a great point. Yes, our streaming is, is available to stay connected. Yeah. And we love seeing it in the parent office as well. Um, so any, as we wrap up, any parting words or words of advice for student athletes and, or, and or parents of student athletes as we enter into this next chapter? Sure. Um, you know, I am just super excited to be able to be around students again and student athletes and parents. So please come see us. Certainly, if you have questions, reach out. Uh, we are here to make sure that you are successful in all of the avenues of who you are. Um, and look forward to, in just a couple of weeks, being able to say hello in person. Really? Yeah, I would just say this is so exciting um, to have new student athletes on campus. And it's just the best feeling ever. I miss lining up with my team for our warmups. I can't wait to get back to that. We're just chatting and goofing around and everything. And it's just an incredible community to be a part of, especially at Pitzer. I found that athletes here have so much going on outside of athletics like incredible passions and hobbies and I just it's great to get to know everybody and I'm so thrilled to be back. Perfect well thank you both so much Miriam and Riley for joining us today and thank you to all of our incoming parents and family members for also tuning in this morning we look forward to seeing many of you this weekend uh, for our move-in weekend um, and also just a big welcome and greeting to the Pitzer College family community. So thank you, thank you all uh, for joining us. And we look forward to seeing some of you for the rest of our programming uh, this week. All right. So take care. Thank, thank you, you all. Everyone. Thank you.